Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. All right, next up, I've got two insulin questions. I'm going to break them up into two parts because they are kind of interconnected from different people from the School Antibody Bodybuilding Members community. First question I've got up here is from Adam T. Adam asks, I, I understand the basic mechanism of uh, insulin use in bodybuilding, but how much does it actually enhance growth in, in practice? What kind of results should someone realistically expect? All right, just so we have some clarification for the users here, let's let's talk through the mechanisms, the basic mechanisms of insulin that are performance enhancing. It, it, insulin isn't directly anabolic per se. It, it It is a hormone that increases nutrient up and transport, nutrient uptake. Um, insulin um, some specific things that insulin does, it increases GLUT4 transport in the muscle cell, increasing glycogen synthesis and amino acid uptake. Um, it Specifically, it increases amino acid transporters on the muscle cell, increasing uptake of leucine and isoleucine, which um, is going to increase muscle protein synthesis um, long term. It's, you know, these are small little things that, that it does. Once these amino acids are inside the cell, it triggers mTOR and thus a corresponding anabolic response. So we have increased mTOR, lowered AMPK, increased IGF-1, and long term we have a, 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 a better anabolic state for muscle growth. Now, what we're going to see with insulin long term is just small increases of, of increased muscle protein synthesis over a long term in theory. Uh, we're going to have, you know, increased muscle protein synthesis as a result of using the insulin. And it's just small, tiny bits. But if we think about it, if we're increasing muscle protein synthesis by a few grams every time we use it or whatever, I'm just using arbitrary numbers, that adds up over the course of the year. That might be a couple of extra pounds of muscle over the course of the year. Not something that you can see from week to week. I also have seen, you know, just anecdotally, it does seem to, over time, increase the capacity to, to synthesize glycogen. It seems like guys have increased muscle glycogen synthesis over a period of time. And you, you, you'll you see it when you guys that, that run insulin, they get this really full, bubbly, round appearance that just doesn't seem to happen with non-insulin users. And it also allows you to push the food even higher. There is sort of an upper limit of what you can achieve with um, with eating food without insulin. I mean, you, you you know, when I hear a guy's eating a thousand grams of carbs, I'm almost certain that there is some insulin at play there. There almost has to be physiologically for us to be able to deal with that amount of carbohydrates and glucose uptake when we're talking about um enhanced bodybuilding so that's that's sort of what i see and you know my thought process on it now you know at a high level what this does is increase glycogen synthesis as i mentioned increases uh amino acid uptake in long term increases muscle protein synthesis you know and it's all a little small subtle differences it's not anything radical that you're going to see a change immediately over day but this is like one of these small things that compounds over time and, you know, look, I, you know, I can't put an exact number on it, but let's just say if you are synthesizing an extra few grams of, um, if there's, you know, stimulating an extra couple grams of muscle protein synthesis daily, that could translate into a couple pounds over the course of a year. And over the course of five years, that might be an extra 10, 15 pounds of muscle, which is pretty significant when you're on stage. Think about slapping 15 pounds of steaks on your body. That would make a big difference. And then also the increased glycogen synthesis gives you an appearance of being full and round. And if you look at bodybuilders pre-insulin and GH use, guys didn't have that 3D look, so to speak. At least I don't think most of them did, where they had this, look like they looked like a balloon that had too much air put into them. That, to me, seems to be a result of the insulin use, where you have increased glycogen increase water and amino acid uptake and just to have this big full round look. So it really kind of is a difference in the look and overall difference. I would say this, look, if you're not a professional bodybuilder, if you don't have the goal of being a professional bodybuilder, there's probably limited reason to use insulin. But, you know, over the long term, it does, these little things add up 
and increases the amount of muscle tissue that you accumulate and changes your look on stage, which is ultimately what we're doing at bodybuilding. All right, second part of the insulin question I have here is from Joseph A. Joseph asks, if we take out the risk of hypoglycemia, is there an optimal timing considered for eating high-carb, high-protein meals and taking insulin with them using rapid-acting insulin? What would be the better nutrient partitioning to eat when the insulin peaks or to take it when the meal is digesting or before you administer it? Or when do you administer it? Yeah, I, you know, look, with rapid acting insulin, uh, you know, I go back, I did a thing in the previous week about how I think most people use insulin incorrectly when it comes to performance enhancement. A lot of guys talk about using a basal insulin like Lantus, which really is not going to have much of a performance enhancing effect. It's really just to manage glucose levels and ba- replace background insulin. And most of the time when guys are using something like Lantus, they already have some sort of underlying uh, existence of either pancreatic insufficiency or uh, they have insulin resistance that needs to be addressed. So the rapid acting insulin likely for performance enhancement is a better choice. Now, I'm not saying to run out and use it. Insulin's inherently dangerous. We want to talk about harm reduction. You're crazy if you run insulin and you're not a professional bodybuilder and you don't know what you're doing. So I'm not telling you to do this, but this is how guys are doing it. Uh, With using rapid-acting insulin, personally, I'm diabetic, but I use it on my high-carbohydrate days only. Uh, That limits my exposure to the insulin, limiting risk of insulin resistance. So if we isolate it to just maybe two high carbohydrate days, in my mind, that limits the exposure to exogenous insulin. And we know that the more exogenous insulin that you use, the more risk there is of insulin resistance. So that's something that we have to be mindful of in long-term insulin dependency and all sorts of downstream effects, negative effects from from the insulin abuse. Now, with the meal timing, this how diabetics take it. You don't wait to take your rapid insulin Something like Novolog or Humalog, if I recall correctly, starts to uh, work, you know, the the curve on it. It hits within 15 minutes. It lasts for about three to five hours. I think it peaks within an hour, if I recall correctly. I could could be a little bit off on that. You can look look up the pharmacokinetics on it, but it starts working within 15 minutes. So typically what I will do is take it right before I eat my meal, I eat my meal. And if you're like, I've heard of guys waiting to use it and to try to time up the peak with it. And to me, that's just idiotic. You're going to end up going hypo. Uh, Also, uh, I see a lot of guys that'll take it with every meal and not every other meal. And then they end up going hypo because they were like, well, shit, I took five units with my first meal. I took another five units with my next meal. And then I ended up going hypo. I'm not sure why I used the same amount. That's because there's still some of that insulin from the previous meal still present, likely. Uh, Effectively, you know, a unit or two. I don't, you know, just using that as a bro way of equating things. But some of that insulin is still present in your system, so you don't need as much. So usually what I will do is use the insulin every other meal on the high day. I never take it before I sleep. It's pretty stupid to take it for your last meal. To make sure that there's plenty of carbohydrates present when I do take it. And, you know, so usually I will take my Humalog injection and then I eat my meal. And in diabetics, it's meant to, to deal with mealtime spikes in glucose when you're eating a meal. So just, you know, I, I use it the way that the drug was designed to use. I don't try to get things timed up correctly. And it's going to be present for up three to five hours. So there's no reason to take another dose before then. It's still active. It's still working. And typically that's how I run it.